Hello, my name is James Lucor. I'm from Mississippi State University, and I'll be showing you a presentation I made on green chemistry. So, what is green chemistry? Well, this definition comes from the Environmental Protection Agency. Green chemistry is the design of chemical products and processes that reduce or eliminate generation of hazardous substances. Essentially, green chemistry is the idea of making chemistry more environmentally friendly as well as more sustainable. History of green chemistry. In the early 1900s, chemistry was changing from just theories that scientists worked on in labs to industries done in factories. This includes making electricity in power plants and making fuel for cars. But in the mid-1900s, the negative effects of chemical pollutions were becoming apparent. Around this time, many countries around the world began forming groups within their government to combat the pollution. In 1970, America formed the Environmental Protection Agency. In 1990, the Pollution Prevention Act was passed, furthering America's policy for green chemistry. However, green chemistry is always attemp attempting to take further steps in its goal. There are 12 main principles of green chemistry. Number 1. Prevent Waste Design reactions that leave less waste or none at all. For example, one of the winners of a 2012 presidential green chemistry challenge was a professor that created a new reaction to create zimvastatin, a cholesterol medication that uses less steps and raises the yield from its precursor from 70% to 97%. Number two, maximize atom economy. This means to create reaction where as many of the starting materials end up as the desired product as possible rather than unwanted extra products. This helps feed into preventing waste. Atom economy is calculated by dividing the weight of the product by the weight of the reactants. The example here shows two different reactions to make the same product, with the second having a much higher atom economy than the first. Number three, design less hazardous chemical synthesis. Design reactions that use and produce as few harmful chemicals as possible. Number four, design safer chemicals and products. Design chemicals that can perform the same actions as those that exist, both less toxicity. For example, Procter & Gamble developed a mixture used in paint that uses soya oil and sugar rather than fossil fuels, reducing the hazardous components of the paint by 50%. Number five, Use safer chemicals and products. Avoid using toxic chemicals whenever possible. This is similar to number four, but is more about the use of chemicals rather than creating new chemicals. F for example, in 2014, QD Vision Inc. developed a way to use heavy hydrocarbons in a reaction that had previously used far more hazardous materials for the creation of flat screen displays for phones and TVs. Number six, increasing energy efficiency. Create reactions that can be done at room temperature and pressure. Standard room temperature is around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius or 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Standard room pressure is about one atmosphere or around 101 kilopascals. For this example, in 2005, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to Yves Chauvin Robert H. Grubbs and Richard R. Schrock for their work into a new type of reaction called metathesis that can be carried out at room temperature and pressure. Number seven, use renewable feedstock. Feedstock is the starting material that is used for many reactions, so this means to use starting material from renewable resources rather than limited ones like fossil fuels. For an example, in 2012, BioAmber Inc. created a method to create succinic acid, an important starting material in many reactions, from fermented glucose rather than from petroleum, which is what it is traditionally made from. Number 8. Avoid using chemical derivatives. Avoid using blocking groups or protecting groups whenever possible, as it generates additional waste. An example of this is tert butyloxy carbonyl protecting group, also called BAC, which is used as a protecting group on amino acids during reactions. Number nine, use catalysts, not stoichiometric reagents. 
In principle, catalysts are not consumed in the reaction, meaning they can be regenerated and reused within the reaction. An example of this is aerobic oxidation, which is oxidation using oxygen in the air, which is normally very slow, but using catalysts can cause it to occur much faster. Number 10. Design chemicals and products that degrade after use. Develop products that will naturally degrade in the environment rather than remain and cause more pollution. One example of this is a biodegradable alternative to plastics called NGO created by the company NatureWorks. Number 11. Analyze in real time to prevent pollution. Monitor all reactions to ensure that they are creating as few unwanted byproducts as possible. One example of this is real-time IR monitoring. As its name would suggest, real-time IR monitoring allows you to monitor the reaction as it goes on rather than just at the end. Number 12. Minimize potential for accidents. This includes both designing chemicals and reactions that have the smallest possible risk for accidents and practicing general lab safety. This prevents damage to the environment, to the lab, and you. Thank you for watching.